The Iowa Hawkeyes men's basketball team is going to be facing a tough challenge coming up here as they take on the number three team in the nation in the Texas Longhorns out of the Big 12 Conference. This game is part of the CBE Classic, which will be held down in Kansas City, Missouri in the Sprint Center. This is actually the third time in the last five seasons that these two teams have faced off as part of a preseason tournament. Iowa won back in 2004 in Maui, while uh, Texas won in Kansas City in 2005 when it used to be called the Guardians Classic. Uh, this Rick Barnes squad is uh, defensive focused as most of Rick Barnes squads have been in the last uh, 12 years uh, in Texas. Um, opponents this year are only shooting 41, uh, excuse me, shooting 27 percent on the year. Uh, that's 17 percent from three-point range, and I believe they're averaging somewhere around 40 points a game. So, defense is a big deal for these guys. It's an experienced squad. They start three seniors. Uh, James, Pittman, and Mason. Combined together, they have over 300 games of experience, 2,600 points, and over 1,700 boards. So they've got a very experienced and very talented uh, senior group there. Texas plays almost a four-guard set, depending on you actually classify Damian James. He's a guy that's so impressive, actually, I'm probably going to have to look at my notes here that I put down on him. Uh, he's a senior, number five, 6'7", 225 pounds, a four-year starter. 10 rebounds away from being the third uh, Longhorn to post 1,000 points and 1,000 rebounds in a career. He's reached double figures in 71 games, a candidate for the low Senior Class Award. He's on the Naismith preseason watch list, a candidate for the John Wooden Award. He's leading the team in scoring and rebounding. He has 19.5 points a game, 11 rebounds per game. He's shooting 61% from the field, including 4 from 5 behind the arc. He's uh, 88 rebounds away from becoming Texas' all-time leading rebounder. And he's currently on Texas's all-time block list at 7th. He has 38 career double-doubles, which is 4th all-time in Texas history. As you can see, Damian James is a tough player. So I was going to have hands full in that regard. Uh, other guy I want to bring up is a guy, uh, Mason. He's number 24, a senior, six foot two. Doesn't score a lot, but he distributes the ball well. He's kind of the glue of the team. The team kind of feeds off of him. He's a menace on the defensive side of the ball, though. Boy, and he's going to give our guards a fit when it comes on that side. Uh, Texas also has three phenomenal freshmen. Two of them are actually a year removed from their senior year in high school. Uh, Jacobin Brown hasn't played organized ball in over 24 months or 23 months, depending on how you look at it. Uh, that was before the season started. His, he was ineligible from his high school team. Uh, he's almost 20 years old now as a freshman. He does start for the Longhorns. Another guy, Avery Bradley, he's just a highlight real guy. Some people ranked him as number one in the nation coming out of high school last year, depending on what list you looked at. He's a McDonald's All-American, and if you watched any of that slam dunk competition during the McDonald's All-American game, you saw what he can do. And if you haven't seen that, I suggest you go to YouTube and, and, and take a look. The other guy is Jordan Hamilton. He's the other guy that actually has been a year removed from high school. He petitioned to get a fifth year of eligibility in high school. It didn't happen. Um, He's a pure and simple, I guess, all you can really say from him is he's a scorer. Doesn't play a lot of defense and kind of has an edge to him, but he can score in a variety of ways, and he does a lot of, have a lot of matchup problems for, for Iowa. Uh, speaking of Iowa, I just want to touch a little bit on the three guys that I said at the beginning of the season that I would, re I would really rely on uh, in Tucker, Cole, and Gatons, and it's been pretty much that way for the three, for the three games so far this year. Tucker leads Iowa in points, assists, and three-pointers made. Cole is shooting 64% from field goal range. He's leading the team in rebounds, leading the team in blocks, as you'd expect him to be. Gatons is doing everything again this year. Uh, second in points, second in rebounds, second in three-pointers made, third in assists, second in steals, first in minutes per game, and he's 13 for 13 from the free throw line. Can't expect much more from Matt Gatons in that regard. And those three are going to be the key in this game as well. We need to get all three on the same page. They're going to have to lead this team to have any type of chance to stay in this game against Texas. And so how does Iowa stay in this one? First of all, we're going to have to limit possessions. We can't get into run and gun with this. And for the most part, Texas hasn't been a high-scoring team under Barnes. Um, so if we can limit possessions, take care of the ball, um, that's going to be a big, big deal. Speaking of taking care of the ball, our guards have to do that. Texas's guards are very, very, very good on the defensive side of it, and they're going to hound us up and down the court. So if our ball handling abilities aren't there, we're going to be turning the ball over and our, our possessions will be limited. And, the, and one of the biggest things we're going to have to see uh, coming up in this game is we're going to have to avoid the scoring droughts. UC Irvine played these guys earlier in the year, and they went nine and a half minutes without scoring. I think Texas put up 20-some points in a row or something like that, and then the game just got a hand at that point. So Iowa has to avoid that scoring drought. Uh, 
when teams shoot under 40% against Texas, they're 167 and 17 under Barnes. Iowa is shooting 37.3% on the year. That's going to be a big key for this game. My prediction for this one, the Texas Longhorns, 68. Iowa Hawkeyes, 52.